especially being in the spirit. We just came into God's presence, isn't it? Hallelujah. As I look around to in this area to, tonight, I see a lot of people in this, this sanctuary that God has turned lives around, took what was old and made new. The changer, and now we, we all then aren't where we're supposed to be at right now, but we're on a journey to get there. And, you know, God is, is working on each and every person. He's doing a live operation. Yeah, and your conscience to it. And so you're going to feel the pain. You're going to feel, you're going to feel his love. You're going to feel when he's not pleased with you. You're going to feel all kinds of things. And you're going to feel the enemy too. And so he has supplied you to overcome your failures, your shortcomings, and everything else that it's part of life. Because we're still on this earth, right? And we're all trying to get home, right? But we can fight to have heaven on earth, can't we? And the good thing is, we're having the helper to do that. Amen? Let everybody come go to pay, uh, Romans 8, 26. Romans 8. Praise you, Lord. And the word of God says, um, everybody there? Okay. Likewise, verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helped in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself make intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. So one thing God has done has changed your life to be glorified. To be glorified for him, for his image. Now, we are called to fulfill his purpose. That's what we're called for, to fulfill his purpose. Nothing about getting all these Blessings are the benefits, but what we're called for is to do his, his purpose. And everything you do will work out for the good. In everything, as you're called, as you're willing to do his will, you might make some bumbling mistakes. I have made many. But everything worked out is working for my good. As long as I stay connected to him, he will be my dad and I will be his son. Amen. Just as my son is to me, little Isaiah, he makes many mistakes. And as I'm training him to be a better little son, you got to understand something. I'm learning fatherhood all over again. I miss my opportunities with my other ones. But God allowed me to have a chance to understand how the father sees his son. And how he corrects, how he disciplines, how he loves, how he cherishes. And when he disciplines, it's not for my bad. 
is for my good. And it's beneficial for my life. And it's beneficial for your life. All you have to do is accept it. Amen? We have to be trained. The training will never stop. It will never stop. Every time you think it's over, he got something else waiting for you. <laughs> the eight ball in the side pocket. <laughs> Amen? Let's go to Ezekiel 36. Nice teaching is called anointed life. Anointed life. I just got the, I had the teaching together, but I didn't have a title for it. And just before I got ready to come, it came. And then everything else was coming with it, adding on. It's because God, you know, he, Want to see how far you're going to go when he push you off the edge. Are you going to trust him? Because, you know, he's like a, like a mother eagle or a, father, a mother eagle. It comes down and push the, the eagle out the nest to see if it's ready. And if it's not ready, it swoops down and catches it and brings it up. But you know one thing about how God does it. He makes it, un the eagle, the mother eagle Say, okay, you've been around long enough. Now it's time to make you uncomfortable. So he started taking all the comfort things out and let the pricks and everything hit the, the baby eagle so that the baby eagle don't want to be in that comfort zone no more, but willing to go make that step to fly as his nature was made to do. Amen? Ezekiel 36, everybody there? All right, good. I'm, I'm going to try to get there. Verse 24. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from your, your filthiness and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues, and you will keep my judgment and do them. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. I will deliver you from all your uncleanness. I will call from the grain and multi multiply it and bring no famine upon you, and it will multiply the fruits of your trees, and the increase of your fields, so that you need never again bear and reproach of famine among the nations. God is bringing the body of Christ through deliverance. He is bringing the body of Christ through deliverance because there's been a lot of comfortable Christians around. You got to understand something. As you, I know as you're out in the workplace, in places that you gather around, you can identify when you see a carnal Christian because he speaks carnal. They say things that's not of God, and, but they use the label of Christian to make you to identify them as who they think they are because they're not following who they're supposed to be. The thing about the purpose of God's will God is trying to bring you to a place that you're not supposed to know where you're going. He's going to give you revelation. He's going to give you dreams, but he's going to tell you how you want to get there. All you have to do is follow and trust. And trust. But the main thing is you got to know him. You got to know him to trust him. Amen? Amen. He will cause you to walk in the anointing of the Lord. He is fighting for your position back into your life. Some people swayed away, but he, he's causing people to come back so they can walk in the anointing that they was called for. 
to walk in the life of purpose. That's a purpose that we're supposed to desire to have. Because we are made for this. Amen? When you do not yield to the Holy Spirit, you are turning your back to him. So I hope that when God is showing you something to fulfill, see it all the way through. No shortcuts. Like Pastor said, there's no drive through through the anointing. If you do go through a drive through I guarantee the line is long. And you have to wait patiently to get to the window. <laughs> Amen. Let's go to 2 Samuel 6. This will be a short teaching. Hmm? I know I could be long-winded, but uh, I could be long-winded. But you got to understand something. That's my purpose. When the, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you can't help but do what he says to do. You can't. The joy of the Lord comes within you. You can't stop talking about the, the benefits of who he is and what he's done and what you've seen him do and what he's done in your life and what he's seen him done in other people's life. And then you see the failures that people have walked away from and you choose not to follow that. Choose not to follow that. Second Samuel 6, verse 6. And when they came to Nekon threshing floor, Uzziah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord rose against Uzziah, and God struck him there for his error, and he died there by the ark of God. And David became angry because the Lord outbreak against Uzziah Yuza, and he called the name of the place Perez Yuza to this day. David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, How can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David, but David took it aside into the house of Obed Edom the Gittite. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. Can you imagine what David was saying? Man, I got to get this thing over to my house. Man, he's getting blessed for my, my stuff. Because that was the enemy. And he's like, man, look at all this stuff coming on him. Because you know why? The presence of the Lord dwelt there. The presence of the Lord dwelt there. There was favor. There was blessings. There was treasures. There was, I guarantee you, people was getting healed, delivered. All kinds of stuff was happening. See, they only tell you about the little stuff, but there was more happening there. And David was like, I need that here. So this will happen. Now, it was told, David, King David saying, the Lord has blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that belongs to him. Oh, all that belongs to him. That means there was increase. Because of the ark of God, so David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with gladness. And so it was that when those bearing the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, you imagine six paces? I don't know what six paces is, but it don't seem far. <laughs> that he sacrificed oxen and fattened sheep. Can you imagine? He, I don't know how long the journey was, but six paces is not far. He stopped and sacrificed oxen and sheep every six paces till he got home because he knew that the sacrifice he brought to the Lord was going to bring increase. 
because being in his presence is fullness. Anything you need in this, in this presence, it's there. Then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. Now, I don't want nobody be in here being butt naked trying to dance before the Lord. <laughs> so David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord. were shouting with the sound of trumpet. Hmm. Hallelujah. Now, I wrote down the presence of God brought the blessings. We have to respect God's presence. We have to step in and the anointing that's in you will be chasing the anointing. So the anointing that's in you will be chasing the anointing. That's the anointing that comes from above. Because anointing in you is for you. But there's another anointing that comes upon you. Ah. The anointing to teach you. And it's going to teach you how to overcome. How many of y'all need to overcome some things? How many of y'all got some issues in your life? And you need to overcome. So you need to have a desire to chase the anointing. Because you're anointing, aren't you? You have an anointing life, right? So chase the anointing because that's your desire. So that you can be filled. So when you're empty, he can fill you again. You know, they say that um, in the Old Testament, when they had visitors that come to their houses, they would, you know, in the morning time, if they wasn't pleased with the, the visitor, they left their cup empty to give them a sign, it's time for you to go. <laughs> and, and, but if you saw your cup filled, that means they was pleased with you to stay a little longer. You know? So when you get empty, you need to get filled for more. Amen? The presence of the Lord is what we are seeking. The word says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all things shall be added unto you. But you got to be a seeker first for what? His righteousness. His truth. Not what the devil said, but what God says. Amen? 1 Corinthians 5. First Corinthians five seventeen. Am I in the right chapter? No, I did it again, didn't I? Second Corinthians five seventeen. Boy, Pastor, don't get far away from me, does he? <laughs> <laughs> and I guarantee you, you'll do the same thing eventually. <laughs> you know, you ever heard that statement, like father, like son? Yeah. That's how we're supposed to be, too, with Christ. Like father, like son. They, when they see us, they're supposed to see Jesus. Amen. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. I wrote down, all things work for the good through the anointing. All things work for the good through the anointing. All things work for the good through the anointing. You put that in your spirit. Because when things are going bad, you can say to yourself, all things work for the good through the anointing. Because what you're seeing physically is just for a moment. But what you know spiritually is for everlasting. It's an eternal thing. Amen? 
Now all things work for the for the good through the anointing, through the presence of the Lord. We need to come to the repentance. You know, you got to keep the blood on you. Got to keep the blood on you. Got to have a repentant heart. You can't walk with bitterness, anger. Can't walk with revenge. You, you understand? You can't walk with us. Uh, somebody offended you. You got to get past that. Bless that person. Forgive and bless. Amen? Because you want to keep the anointing working through you. And it's hard sometimes. Trust me, it's hard. But you have to do it because you know it's going to work out for the good. Amen? We need to come to the repentance and worship. The sword of the Spirit must be spoken through the anointing. That is God's word. So if you go, you have to use God's word to overcome. Because it's anointed word that will help you overcome. Because there's a lot of voices out there. There's a lot of voices that comes at you, especially when you're going through something. But there's one true voice. One true voice. That can make the difference to overcome anything that's not, that seems to bring fear and doubt and unbelief. Oh, I can't get through this one. Oh, yes, you can. It, God said he'll never give you more than you can bear. He said he'll never give you more. So if, if there's something there that seems like impossible, that's your training. Because it's beyond what you can do. It's by faith that you receive. Amen? Psalm 16. Anointed life. Psalm 16. Verse 7. Psalm 16, 7 says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. That means if he gave you counsel, that means you seek after him. You have to seek after him to get the counsel, right? My heart also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be what? Moved. How many times things try to move you? Yeah. Uh, I, I will, I, this is a disciple program. Well, it's really a disciple ministry family knitted together of believers. And sometimes I hear words that come. I don't say nothing because it's not time for to say stuff. But it's not things that sound like Christ. But it sounds like the enemy. And sometimes people choose to listen to the voice of the stranger because it's comfortable to them because that's the old man that they still believe in. But there's a time when you have to turn around and fight that demon. And speak the word of God and move it out the way. Because if God's for you, who can be against you? Especially a spirit. It's just a spirit. You have the power in your tongue to speak to that spirit and move it. You know, we don't fight against each other. But the enemy wants us to fight against each other. They sit there and they speak in your ear. Yeah, tell, yeah, da, 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 yeah. And yeah, I'm going to tell you something. And then, the, and then the enemy goes to the other side and tell the person, yeah, da, 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 da. Oh, I'm going to tell you something. Now they're eating a the meal. Hey, John, go ahead, tell them this there. Tell them that. Yeah, I, I'll tell them something else. We're going to eat good tonight. <laughs> they're coming out belching them. 
and passing gas and everything else. Brrr, yeah, that was a good one, Charlie. Now they settle and you comfortable while you're miserable and torment until you kick them out. They won't be, they're going to be comfortable. When you kick them out, they got to go, go to dry grounds. Now they're miserable while you're at peace. That's what the anointing does. Amen? Therefore, my heart is glad. Verse 9. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoice. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Sheol. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. And your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. No matter what you're going through, the devil is a liar. He will always try to put an idol before you. To fulfill you. Only the presence of the Lord will fulfill you. We must maintain deliverance. That's not an option. That has to be part of your life. Every disobedience alters your destiny. And people will sell their anointing for self-gratification. I'll say that again. Every disobedience alters your destination. And people will sell their anointing for self-gratification. Amen? Everybody okay? Hallelujah. And I'm still here. I've been working for Total Freedom for a, a moment. Just a moment. Because the rest of my, the life before that was many years. I've only been here, this is the longest time I've ever stayed in one place and settled. Everywhere else in my life, I was here, there, there, here, here, there, there running from the cops, making sure the cops couldn't find me over here and doing what I needed to do, Ship, pick up camp and go somewhere else. But for the first time, I have peace. I'm settled. I don't mean that everything around me is peaceful. But I walk in peace. Even when I sometimes lose my peace, I find it. I fight to get it. So I can stay unmovable. Because I see, I learn from other people's mistakes. I see people run from the presence of the Lord. And I see them go through tr uh, troubles. And I avoid those troubles. I try to run. And it didn't work out too good. The demons were waiting for me. And my demons, they like to appear. They like to show themselves. And I thank God that allowed it to happen to me like that. Because it made me realize there's a spiritual side that I need to fight against. And at the same time, he showed me the, his side too. So I know that his side is more glorious. You know, a lot of people don't know my testimony, how I got here. But it's not time. I'll be here for a while if I tell you my testimony. But it was a divine appointment. And no man can change that to let me know that there's not a God here. Because it's embedded in my brain. And it stays there. He reminds me. He reminds me. So when my failures comes, he reminds me, all things work for the good. 
So I try to make no, less failures. I try to avoid failures. I try to not to even run to them. I try to run from them. Amen? Galatians 5. Not try, I do. I do. I had to learn from a lot of big mistakes because God is a good spanker. He knows we're spanked to hurt. And I don't want to get hurt like that no more. I try not to. And sometimes I make an oops. Anybody made an oops in their life? <laughs> an oops, a mistake. Now you keep on doing it, it's a habit. But the mistake is different. You made a mistake. But if it's constantly doing the same thing over and over and over and over again, it becomes a habit. The oops is different. I get that real quick and Lord, repent and keep on going. Amen? Galatians 5.22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. That means the law means death. There's no death in that law. There's no law in there. That means that you're free from death. You're eternal. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with all, with its passion and desires. Hmm. Hallelujah. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Amen? Now, that means when you walk in the Spirit, you are a new creation in Christ. Old things have been passed away. Amen? And I got five examples about that. Number one, and also when you walk in the Spirit, you have dominion. You have dominion. You have dominion over all the powers of Satan. Number one, the Holy Spirit always causes change. Number two, it always produces fruits. Good fruits at that. I should put good fruits. Number three, spiritual change is a process which is sometimes painful. Spiritual change is a process which is sometimes painful. Number four, the Holy Spirit is your guide. And number five, the rest of our life, we are learning who we are in Christ. There's always more. Let's go to Philippians 4. Verse 9. Anointed life. Is everybody there? Philippians 4, verse 9 says, The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again through your surely did care, but you lacked what? Opportunity. 
Now, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things I have Learn both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We know that God is going to make a way. We know that God's going to make a way. I've been going through some stuff through my family and stuff that's from my home. But I know that God was going to make a way. And, and he has. But I didn't go crazy and act crazy and act stupid and tearing out my hair and, <laughs> and walking around. And, no, I just did what was before me and his plan that he had provided for me and seen it through. And, and, and was thanking him before it came. Just thanking him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Even though I didn't know what's going to happen, I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. And if this don't work, Lord, I know you got a plan. Because you, st- you, you created me to be here for a reason. For your season. Amen? And that's how we're supposed to look at it. Even with the discipleship house. I have to talk to my boys right here. Because, got to remember, I came through that same, where you're going through, I came through that same house. I had to go through the same sufferings you're going through. The weariness. If this is going to end. Is this going to, if this is all I got. Man, I didn't expect this when I got here. God already came through here for you. All you got to do is walk out, walk the path that he made established for each and every one of you. And I guarantee you, it will work out for your good. Guarantee you. I put my life on that. It will work out for your good. But you have to believe. And you have to work it out on your own salvation. Don't follow somebody else's failure. Watch somebody's victory. It'll take you to another place. We know that God is going to make a way. But it takes the right decisions. Christ lead by the Spirit and is backed by the anointing. I'll say that again. Christ lead, Christ lead by the Spirit and he's backed by the anointing. Because Christ is the anointing. Amen? We must let faith be activated to receive the power. Because with faith, you can please God. And he'll show up because you believed. 2 Timothy 2. Second Timothy 2 You know, everybody is so used to getting so much anointing from pastor's teaching because you get so much revelation. And he speaks like oracles. <laughs> um, but, you know, God showed me something. Even though he speaks all the power that, he, that the Holy Spirit speaks to him, a lot of people miss it. He speaks out of the Holy Spirit speaks right out of him. And he, some things, he don't even know what's going on around here. And he's speaking and it's hitting people. Boom, 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 boom. It's not pastor. It's the anointing. The same anointing that's on him is on us. But you got to believe it. You got to stop looking at people just because, oh, this is such and such. So I, don't, I ain't going to listen to him. You better start listening. If God can use a donkey, how much more can he use us? He used a fool if you have to. He said that if you don't worship me, I'll let the stones cry out to me. So if he can use anything else, 
how much more did he desire to use his sons and daughters? The anointing. That's purpose for us to be worked for. Hit the anointing. We are made to work for the anointing. We're placed on earth. We was born for this. God said that while we were yet in sin, he died for us. So he was considering us when we was out there acting like a boom fizz idiot. He said, I got a plan. And the Holy Spirit is just sitting there like this. Now? 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 Not yet. Not yet. I got a, a divine time for him. Now? Not yet. Okay, now. Boom! Instantly, it comes upon you. I remember sitting with Pastor one time. The Lord told me to remind me of this. And I used to read the scripture. It shut up in your, in Jeremiah, it shut up in your bones. Fire shut up in your bones. Well, one day I'm sitting with Pastor and I'm talking to him. We're just talking down in his office at his house when he was down in his house. We're just having a conversation. Then all of a sudden the fire hit me. Hit me so hard. I jumped out the seat like I was a firecracker. Boom! And I looked at him right in his eyes and said, It's like fire! It's like fire! And, and the Holy Spirit left me like this. <laughs> and it was like, and I sat down. I was like, <laughs> first time. That was the first time. But when the Holy Spirit hits you like that, you're, you're able to see everything that you're doing, but you have no control of it. You can't stop it for nothing. And the fire that comes that way is different than fire that you see in the natural. It's like fire come up your bones. That's what I'm seeking after. That's what I'm looking for. That presence. It's supernatural. It's different than what the man can give you. I don't know if you remember that, but it's embedded in my brain. Like I tell you, there's things that's embedded spiritually that I can tell people and they just look at me like, yeah, okay, here come another one. And I'm like, yeah, okay, you don't have to believe, but if, when God does that to you, you'll be walking around just like me, looking like a fool to the, to the carnal world because they can't understand the spiritual things of God. Second Timothy 2, 1, 6, it says, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace, that means his plan, that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier as of Jesus Christ. No one engage in warfare and take himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlists him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletic, athletics, he is not crowned unless he, what? Competes according to what? The rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake to the crops. God is looking for faithful men and women. We should endure hardship, and it will not pull you out of, out of position. The enemy wants to, us to run into carnal thoughts and behaviors. That's what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to run the carnal thoughts and behaviors. He wants you to act crazy instead of having peace. There are guidelines. We must be strong and grace that his plan, that is his, that is his plan that he has in our life. Hardship, this is what hardship is. Let go. If you let go and go on, we are to walk in his character. In a grateful state, the devil will not be able to touch you. When you're in that state of gratitude, the enemy will not be able to touch you. Because you know that God's there before you. And God's your rear guard. He got you. He's covering you all around. The blood of Jesus is there. Your repentance. 
You have a repentant heart. You got, you're trying to get your heart purified where God can dwell in. And where he rests at, the presence of the Lord is there. Amen? Psalms 25. Verse 8. Twenty-five, eight, good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, He teaches sinners in the way. The humble He guides in justice, and the humble He teaches His way. All the paths of the Lord are mercy and truth, to such as keep His covenant and His testimonies. For Your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Who is a man that fears the Lord? Him shall He teach in the way He chooses. He Himself shall dwell in prosperity and the descendants shall inherit the earth. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant. My eyes are ever towards the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. How many of y'all want your feet out of the net if you got stuck in something? Huh? Hallelujah. Turn yourself to him and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. The trouble of my heart have enlarged, bringing me out of my distresses. Look on my affliction and the pain and forgive all my sins. That means you have to forgive others, don't you? Because if you can't forgive others, you can't be forgiven, right? Consider my enemies, for they are many, and they hate me with cruel hatred. Keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed, for I put my trust in you. Let integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. That means you have to learn patience, don't you? That you have to learn patience. You must be a covenant keeper. Your covenant to him, you must keep it. Because God honors that. The Father acknowledged the blood. That means you have to have a repentant heart, because the Father can only see you through the blood. And if, if the blood is upon you, the enemy sees the anointing. The enemy is cruel, and there, there are many of them. We must maintain our integrity within him. Amen? 1 John 2. Verse 20. Everybody there? But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written it to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that you not, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus the Christ, he is the Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the, and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to your concerning those who try to deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things that is true and is not a lie. And just as he taught you, you will abide in him. You must keep the anointing alive in you. You must keep the anointing alive in you so you can be guided, that you can be teachable. You can be protected from your errors of deception. You got to keep the anointing alive in you. You got to be humble. You got to be teachable. Like a little, like a little kid. Like, like, like a son. He said, he said, we have to have a spirit like a child. Because a child forgives, don't they? Quickly. 
So we have to have a childlike faith. It moves. A lot of us get stuck on that. Isaiah 11. Isaiah. I got a couple more and we'll be done. Are y'all getting this? Anointed life? Now, getting it means you have to practice it. That means when you go to work tomorrow and you're around some heathens, you have to practice it. I remember being in construction when I was in the disciples' house. They knew who I was. I would walk around hallelujah and everything else. And then you know what happened? It gave me opportunity to pray for people. When people was going to distress and when they were in trouble, they'd say, hey, brother, can I, can I talk to you real quick? Pull me to the side. And I'll say, okay, let's pray. Pray for salvation. Pray for Because, you know, I want to see them get saved. Getting healed is good. It's good. But seeing somebody getting saved is better. Because their soul's not going to hell. You get healed and still be a healing and go back into your own thing. But if somebody getting saved, getting born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, you're expanding. Hallelujah. Y'all should be rejoicing. Anybody doing that at work? Anybody praying for anybody? Anybody seeking for an opportunity? Anointed life. Anointed life. You're supposed to be who you're called to be. Isaiah 11 says this here. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. That is mean Christ. It's the root is Christ. He's the root. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. When the attributes of the Holy Spirit are activated through the anointing in your life, they become your fruit. So when you activate it, of the attributes, they become your fruit. Counsel, wisdom, knowledge. Hmm. Let me say that again. Because I don't think y'all got that. If the word says that the spirit of wisdom and understanding. If the word says in all things, get what? What's the fear of the Lord? What's the first thing the fear of the Lord brings? Wisdom. Wisdom. Counsel. Now, you only get counsel from the Lord if you're seeking him. Amen? All right, let's go on. Let's go to Ephesians 6. I got so used to pastors. I, I, I are hard crowds. If anybody else come up here, boy, they have problems. They have I see eyes looking in the side. Is that right? Mm. Yeah, that's right. I ain't, like I tell you, I ain't scared of y'all. I'm, I was born for this. I was called to this. I didn't choose this. I didn't fight for this. I was called to this. Then I had to fight to get Get in position. And you was called for this. When your opportunity comes, be ready. Because you don't know the day and the hour that God is going to call you. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. On the, put on the full armor of God that 
that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, of, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have it done all to stand. It's an evil day today, isn't it? The world is upside down, but it's caused by the anointing. You know that, right? The anointing is causing everything. He's shaking pockets right now. You know how you put somebody upside down? You know, some of y'all know you bullies out there. You know how you grab somebody and put them upside down and shook their pockets. That's how God is shaking the world. Shaking their pockets out and seeing everything of the things coming exposed. Amen. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, bring and put, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and taking the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the, is the word of God, praying always with the prayer of supplication in the Spirit, being watchful. That's one thing about anointing life. You have to be a watchman. You got to be watchful. You got to be watchful for the things that's going on around you, the activities that's going on so that you have discernment of what's, what's coming and what's going. To the end, with all perseverance, supplication for the saints and for me, the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to to make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am the ambassador in chains that I may be to speak boldly as I ought to speak. This is one good thing that the ointment brings. That brings you revelation. That brings you the mysteries. That brings you the fear of the Lord. Those are good things to have, man. That's a good weapon. You know that, right? When you don't know what to do. Man. You ain't trying to figure it out. You ain't got to figure it out. It just happens. Amen? It is the, uh, our tongue yields to the Holy Spirit to speak the cause and the purpose of his will. That's what our tongue does. So either you're going to speak the cause and purpose of his will or you're going to speak against the cause and purpose of his will. So you have a choice. Amen? John 6. I got one more scripture after John. Come on. John 6. John 6.60. And the word says, therefore, many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is hard saying. You know, Jesus was telling them, you got to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood. And he was thinking carnally because they didn't understand the things spiritually. He said, I ain't going to eat your flesh and drink your blood. You must be crazy. <laughs> but Jesus was talking about things yet to come. Amen. He was talking spiritually. He was, because he was, a, he He's, he's life, isn't he? So this way he said, Therefore many of the disciples that have heard this said, This is a hard saying. Who can understand? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this, he said to them, Does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you are spirit, and they are what? Life. So what you speak through your tongue, either you're going to speak life or death. Amen? It's the spirit that gives life. Jesus was talking spirit because he was spirit. He didn't, he didn't know nothing else but spirit. Because he is spirit. To maintain life, 
you must be connected to life. That's the only way you can maintain the anointing. You have to stay connected to it. Because the Holy Spirit will guide you. He will teach you. He will strengthen you. When you're weak, he will be strong. Amen? So you have to stay connected to it. Because there's going to be a lot of times when you're going to be weak because there are going to be things that seem like it's impossible. But great is he lives in me. And he lives in the world. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen? You speak those words, you keep your eyes focused. Amen? Last scripture, Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Now, this is three-dimensional. But this was speaking, this was speaking, they were speaking then, they were speaking for Jesus and Luke, when he was going to come forth and open the book and close it, and they wanted to kill him. And they were speaking about us, because as he left, he left his helper that we may walk in this anointing. Amen? The word says in verse 1, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable years of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that they may be glorified. The anointing comes to tear Satan's kingdom down. That's what it comes to do. And to heal the sick and raise the dead and see the kingdom of God become expanded. This brings us to contribute. Now, this gives us the opportunity to contribute in the kingdom. Now, it gives us the opportunity to work for him in the kingdom. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, it's not about you anymore. It's about others. Deny thyself. Pick up your cross. And follow. When the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you, a servant of God, they will become anointed with God's presence and power. That's what comes to be a warrior of change. Amen. Father, we come together right now in your precious name, Jesus, Lord, and we thank you for your word and your truth. Allow your word, Lord, to penetrate within our lives that we may be able to move into your anointing. Let your anointing come up, be before us and tell us what we need to do. As we ask you what we need to do for you, Lord, counsel us and instruct us for your next move so that we can be in order and position to move about, to do your will and for your purpose. Now, Father, I ask that you bless each and every person in this, to this room. Let your word penetrate within, within each person that they may be a doer of your word and not a hearer only so that they can be glorified for, your, for you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>